A big problem I have with upgrading old office PCs to make extremely cheap gaming PCs, like the $100 gaming PC I did recently, is that they're just not that upgradable. Now I have a bunch of parts that individually are worth basically nothing, and as a whole, are worth nothing at all, since it's kind of a hodgepodge of parts now. Plus, the GTX 650 I used for it is from my server, so it's even more of a useless mess now. Somewhat like my life, actually. So let's turn this into a $200 12 terabyte server to keep it from going to waste. And yes, the price does include the drives. I'm not gonna be one of those people. Before you even start putting together a parts list, make sure you have something in mind for what you want to use it for. Whether you want a kick-ass Minecraft server for your friends to join so you don't have to pay insane server hosting fees, maybe a media host server, video editing server, or if you're like me, just to store a bunch of garbage you don't need. If you haven't watched the $100 gaming PC video, which you should, I'll give a quick breakdown. I bought a bare bones Dell Optiplex for about $30, put in a four core, four thread Xeon, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and a cheap SSD, along with the GTX 650 for just above $100. It's actually incredibly simple, and if you want to build a system just to use as a budget NAS, starting out with an Optiplex that already has a CPU and RAM will save you a little bit of time. Just make sure it's not a small form factor PC, so you can fit the extra hard drives in. First, parts. This will depend on what you're doing, so I'm going to go over everything you might need. If your starting PC only comes with 4GB of RAM, I would at minimum upgrade to 8GB. You'll see why later, and also be disappointed in me. If you want to host a game server, I would bump it up to 12 or 16 gigabytes if possible. Generally, DDR3 is very cheap, and you can get some in the $20 range easily. Just remember to run MIM test on it for a little bit, so you have more confidence in it. Not that it won't die on you randomly anyways. Next, CPU. If your system doesn't already have a CPU, you can easily snag an LGA 1150 CPU for literally dollars. I got this Pentium Anniversary Edition for literally $7 last year. And the Xeon that's in it right now was only $20. If you need the extra threads, you can get a regular quad-core i5 with hyper-threading. If this is a storage server though, just get whatever's cheap. You'll be okay, I promise. You may want to pick up an HBA. This PC does come with four SATA ports, but since you can swap out all the components in this PC, in the future, you can put it into a new chassis with more hard drive bays for pretty cheap. Plus, you can fit a maximum of four hard drives in here with adapters and an SSD. I personally got an LSI SATA 9212-4i, which has four SATA ports so you can directly connect to SATA drives. If you want to get an HPA that has a SAS connection instead, those will have one SAS port, which you'll need to break out into four SATA or mini SAS ports with a cable like this. Also, if yours is not already in IT mode, make sure you flash into IT mode. If you have big plans for your server in the future, I would also go ahead, bite the bullet, and get an 8i LSI card instead, as that will support up to eight drives. But in my server and backup server, I have been running used drives for almost a year now. I have two six terabyte Seagate Exos drives in my main server and four two terabyte random drives in my backup server. In the backup server, one of them already did die a few months ago and one or two sounds unwell to say the least. On the right side though, no need to format these when it's time to replace them because they're broken. <laughs> the two terabyte Exos drives on my servers have been running non-stop almost a year with absolutely zero issues in RAID 1, so I am going to go ahead and say it. We are going to get used drives for this build. I'm going with two 6 terabyte Exos drives to stay around $200 for this build, but you can bump it up to 12 terabyte drives for about $120 a pop and get double the storage. If you are buying used drives though, buy from a reputable seller with good reviews. And if you're buying multiple of them, don't be afraid to make an offer. I got these two drives for $90 total. $45 a piece. If you are buying used drives though, test the drive as soon as you get it. Any weird noises or bad smart data, just send it back as soon as you get it. Also, make sure the packaging is good. One of my two terabyte drives literally arrived in a small cardboard box wrapped in a tiny layer of bubble wrap, only on the bottom half of the drive like a goddamn Hot Pocket. Who does that? Also, keep an eye on how old the drives are. Yes, a drive can last 15 years, but a majority don't and won't. I aim for the three to five year range for my used drives. Usually, you can check model numbers and see the production run for the drives, or you can just look at the data manufacturer on the drive. Yours won't be the same, but chances are, if someone is selling them in bulk, the drives were purchased around the same time and produced around the same time. Actually, like mine were. One last thing on drives. If you want to use this as a video editing server, I would highly suggest getting flash storage. But from what I've found, there really isn't too much benefit to buying used enterprise SSDs over new consumer SSDs for most people. Lastly, it's a good idea to throw some cheapo SSD on here to store your OS. My cheapo SSD died in the 
regular video. <laughs> so close enough. So let's build this thing. And we're done. Okay, not so easy. This wouldn't be a pre-built PC without something annoying. You need Dell's drive caddies to put your drives in if you're keeping the original Optiplex chassis. I got this one for literally $3 and free shipping. So it's not exactly gonna break the bank, even if you need to. They are also toolless, so you can just line up the pins and slot your drives in. After this, slot in your HPA into a PCIe slot, then connect your drives to it with a SATA cable. Also remember to hook your drives up to the power as well. If you're doing any upgrades, now is also the time to do that. You can slot your new RAM into the RAM slots, and if you need to add or change a CPU, go ahead and do that now as well. My current CPU is pretty much fine for what I'm doing, and I'm also going to be leaving in a quadro for video output. If you want a more detailed build, go ahead and watch the $100 gaming PC since I go over upgrading in a little bit more detail. Now, first thing, check your drives. I cannot emphasize this enough. Use whatever program you prefer and check your disks. Go through your smart data, make sure nothing is out of the ordinary. My drives do look fine though, and if you want, you can also run more thorough testing like HD Tune to make sure everything is as it should be. My quick scan came back clean, and I will post the results of the full scan on the screen. Also, listen for any weird noises. My second drive here makes some weird noises when spinning up. Chances are I'm probably going to return this one. On the bright side, if you have a good backup with RAID 1, you can have zero downtime. <laughs> <laughs> now you're probably asking yourself, why the hell are you in Windows? Well, it's easier for someone to pick up their first time making a server. That's why. Windows, unsurprisingly, is generally not a good pick for a server though. The good-ish thing about Windows though is it's really easy to just mirror your drives. So if you just go into your partition manager, you can mirror them real quick. This makes it so the same exact data is on both drives. This will double our read speed while keeping our write speed the same. It will also mean if one of these drives fail, all of your data will be fine. This is not a backup though. Do not treat it as such. It is redundancy. If you plan on putting critical files on this, back them up in another computer, to the cloud, your neighbor's house, your car, I don't know. Back it up. With that out of the way, let's see how this budget NAS performs. Real quick though, synthetic testing. Crystal Disk Mark got a solid 409 for the read and 220 for the write. For sequential, that is. Random was much worse, but I'm not overly surprised. Speeds are not that crazy, but hey, it's hard drives. In my opinion, not too bad. The read speeds were actually almost as much as the SSD in this PC. The sequential, not the random. Let's start with the easiest and one I'm honestly most familiar with, Minecraft. Setting up a Minecraft server is actually really easy. It's just a matter of downloading the server file for whatever version you prefer, running it and connecting to that computer's IP. If you wanna have friends on other networks join, port forwarding is usually required. Minecraft servers are somewhat easy to run though. 1.19 ran fine with no lag or TPS issues. So I threw a modded server on here and that actually runs really well too. I have no friends, so it's just me, but hey, blocks break and my quarry works. So if you manage to find some people that still play 1.7.10 modded, they can join and play with you. You could also, if you have no friends, just connect it with another $100 gaming PC so you can distribute the load between two systems like I used to do back in 2014 because my poor FX6300 couldn't handle running the internal server and the game itself at once. So... If you want to host a media server, whether it's just for you and your house, or if you want to let everyone you know have a piece of the perfectly legal pie, which is also a great way to distribute the blame, maximum storage is going to be a high priority. But for media encoding, you're also going to want a GPU. Either a cheap Quadro or a GeForce card will do just fine for you. If you want multiple people streaming from your server at once, getting a GTX 950 or even a 1050 can help. Or if you want to run your own pirate network, pull up your beer money for the year and get a Quadro RTX card. Once you have that, you can spend the rest of your money on drives. My two Seagate Exos drives were easily able to handle just local streaming on my network to just me. Since we're unfortunately using Windows, Plex is still somewhat the way to go. If you just want this as a media server, I would highly suggest throwing even a very user-friendly version of Linux like Ubuntu or Mint on here and setting up Jellyfin instead of Plex. And the boring but inevitable one, storage. It works. <laughs> On Windows, you literally just share a file or the entire drive and you can access it on other Windows computers very easily. While these drives may not be fast enough to saturate a 2.5 gigabit connection, let alone a 10 gig one, they are plenty fast for reading and writing for me so far. All of my use Seagate drives have treated me very well to this point and I run them in RAID 1 for the performance and also a bit of a safety net if I'm being honest. But I am probably going to transition to a RAID 5 or Z2 setup as I start building out my server more, which if you want to find out why I love my server more than any other piece of tech I have but would go back in time and never buy it in a heartbeat, subscribe. It'll be my first negative video in a while and it makes me look stupid, so bonus points. Obviously, they can't be used for something like video editing, but you could store big games, photos, maybe movies if the FBI doesn't find out that I couldn't find the Lion King at my local thrift store to rip, so I borrowed it from a friend. Oh no, 